While the first Friday the 13th was always modeled to be a knockoff of another popular horror film, I definitely will agree with a lot of the masses when they say that Friday the 13th Part 2 is, in a way, the Wrath of Khan of the Friday the 13th franchise because this is where the franchise really starts kind of, you know, feeling itself out and trying to, and really kind of perfecting a lot of the things that were set up in the first film. But I feel like the formula is much more refined on this side. And yeah, a lot of it is the addition of Jason. Granted, <laughs> of course, we. I guess now is a good time to talk about how uh, indecipherable the continuity is and how many people are asking questions about, how oh, was Jason when this happened? It's like, it, uh, this was during that time when you have to like, you know, when people try to figure that out. But as the series goes on, you just come to the realization you don't really care. And you're gonna, and you're just gonna come to that piece as I get further into this. But I suppose the major factor, which is why Friday the 13th Part 2 came in, yes, with Jason, but I also feel like they were able to kind of build on what they learned from the first film. First major thing, I will say the characters in Part 2 are a heck of a lot more memorable than in Part 1. It was actually interesting to see some characters who, uh, certain characters who I was like thinking, oh, you dead. Not only do a lot of them not die, some of them aren't even there when shit goes down. And I'm also going to say, for as much as I do love Adrienne King as Alice, and I do love her final showdown with Mrs. Voorhees, Ginny, played by Amy Steele, is immediately a much more fun character. I mean, she's the kind of person who tells Frog in a blender jokes, you know? That's the kind of person you want to have a beer with. But I love that she, where everyone else will engage with Jason on a more physical level and try to beat the crap out of him or finish him, I love the fact that Ginny even prior to her even knowing that Jason Voorhees is the menace behind all this, I like how she's already thinking about about who he was and what he's been up to and what he possibly could be like and what motivates him. And I like that because she ponders all of this, the second she is actually confronted with him, the first thing she thinks is what's going to get him to stop. And her solution, while it is heavily reliant on the fact that um, Jason has very poor observational skills. Well, easy to do when all you can do is, all you can see is out through one hole in a bag. And admit Baghead Jason is, I'm, gl I'm glad they did away with that because now when I see it, I think of that scene in Django Unchained with all the uh, uh, wannabe clansmen like going, okay, I'll just make it bear. No, it made it worse. That, that was going through my head every time I see Baghead Jason. But even with that also, apart from the great heroine, uh, a lot of the kills are memorable. Of course, this one. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's a thumbnail pose, by the way. <laughs> 